There we go. Thanks for joining us today, everyone. Welcome to today's live, C live webinar with CNCF, What's New with Open Policy Agent Gatekeeper? I'm Libby Schultz, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. I'm going to read our code of conduct and then hand over to JDIP and Malik, both software engineers at Microsoft. A few housekeeping items before we get started. During the webinar, you're not able to speak as an attendee, but there is a chat box down the right-hand side of your screen. Please feel free to drop your questions there, and we'll get to some if we can in the middle, but we'll leave most of them for the end. Uh, this is an official webinar of CNCF, and as such, is subject to the CNCF Code of Conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that Code of Conduct, and please be respectful of your fellow participants and presenters. Please also note that the recording and slides will be posted later today to the CNCF Online Programs page at community.cncf.io under Online Programs. They're also available via your registration link you use to get into the recording today, and they'll be available on our YouTube playlist online programs. With that, I will hand things over to Jadip and Malik for today's presentation. Cool. Uh, let me see. Let me share my screen first. Okay, I hope uh, you people can see the screen. Yep. Yep, looks good. Cool. Hello, everyone. Uh, we are delighted to have you all here with us for this CNCF webinar. Uh, today's focus is on the Gatekeeper project, uh, and it's exciting new feature that our community has been working on since our last update. Uh, we're thrilled to share uh, the new features that we have added. My name is Nilek Saudari. I work at, uh, as a software engineer at Microsoft Azure, uh, and I'm also involved in contributing to uh, uh, Kubernetes and uh, other projects in the ecosystem. And I'm here with my colleague Jay, his, who is one of the contributor to the GetKeyword project and who will be presenting alongside uh, with me. We have a like, few topics on our agenda for today's presentation. So. Firstly, we'll delve into the Gator CLI and its practical application. Next, we'll explore how we can utilize the external uh, data to interface with the various external sources uh, using the provider-based model as to how uh, it's going to work, and we'll see you know, how we can use it. We'll then examine the validation of workload resources and how the expansion template works. Additionally, we'll also discuss the concept of mutation in Gatekeeper. As an update, we have uh, recently added a new feature that enables user to consume violations with a pops up model. So we'll take a look into that. We'll also touch on cell or you know common expression language and how it relates to Gatekeeper before wrapping up with some of the other updates. Okay, remember the Agile Bank from the last Gatekeeper webinar? Uh, I'm not sure if you are, have attended the previous webinar or not, but we have this Agile Bank that was using a Gatekeeper uh, uh, as, a, as a policy engine in their, in their bank. Uh, and well, they're back and they got some exciting news. So as the developer of the Agile Bank, we have decided to implement a new policy that requires a valid label on any Kubernetes resource. So if you're trying to deploy anything or any Kubernetes resource, uh, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have a valid owner label on that uh, on that resource. And guess what? We're going to use the latest features available in Gatekeeper to make it happen. Uh, so let's uh, take a deeper dive into the details. So we'll first look into the Gator CLI. So if you're familiar with the Gatekeeper, you may have wondered uh, if it's possible to test constraints before uh, applying them to the Kubernetes clusters or how you know incorporate these policies into your CI CD process. So for example, you have an uh, you, you have your existing CI CD process and we want to make sure that you know uh, the many developers on your team are developing the policies, but is there a way to test them uh, before we can put them into the Kubernetes cluster. And you know what? Uh, Gator CLI helps you do exactly that. So this tool allows you to perform shift left validation testing by verifying policies prior to their implementation into the KS cluster. So you don't have to always deploy 
policies onto the cluster and then see how they behave or how they work or you know if they if you want to make any tweaks uh, and uh, turns on the uh, on those policies so with getter cli you can validate policies with ease and ensure the smoother deployment process so getter cli has like a many different sub commands but uh, i want to uh, focus on uh, two sub commands that are like important so let's delve into those two important getter sub commands that are essential for any developer uh, and a user of a gatekeeper so these sub commands are called getter verify uh, and getter test so we'll come to the getter verify a little bit later so let's take a let's take an example scenarios from before that uh, uh, before where we you know we need to create a policy that requires an owner label so as a seasoned developer at Agile Bank, I know how to write a policy. And as you can see from the direct structure, I have, I have the constraint template and constraint in place. So if you're familiar with the gatekeeper and the policies that we, uh, that gatekeeper has, so it has a constraint template, uh, which defines the rego or what essentially the policy is. And then uh, you define a constraint as to on what resources behaves and, uh, and what parameters my uh, policy will have. And the typical directory structure looks like this. And by the way, the example that I'm uh, taking here about the owner level is already uh, present in our gatekeeper uh, library. So you can, uh, you know, uh, go ahead and try, uh, try it out or, you know, feel free to browse the other policies uh, while you are there. So, uh, so we have this directory structure with the policies. However, I still need to check if the policy that I have written actually works. And this is where Gator test comes in. Handy. So you can use the policy that you have written and you can run the getter test against the resource files and you will immediately receive an error if the uh, part doesn't have an owner label. So if you see here right uh, on the uh, on the right hand side, I have like the pod.yaml, which is like a simple uh, simplest part definition uh, it could be and it doesn't have a doesn't have the owner label. So if you run the getter test against the uh, against this resources with the policies that we have written, uh, you will get an error. And we'll see the demo uh, in action in a bit. So getter verify helps us validate whether the constraint template and constraint we have written are correct. So as a good developer, it's always important to write test uh, for, for your code, right? So, uh th this is where this is where the uh, the test driven development of the getter say like and uh, uh you know comes in handy so uh, if you can see on the right hand side we have something called a suit dot yaml the suit dot yaml file serves uh that purpose of testing over here so if you look at it we have a different things like you know hey uh what is our template uh wh where is our template uh, uh then what constraint we are trying to test and there are some asser assertions that you can define so like whether you are expecting the violations or not so with with this suit.yaml file and the getter verify what you can do is you can make sure that uh, whatever policies that you have written uh, is correct so with getter test you can test whether the resource that you are going to create uh, will be allowed or not with getter verify what you can test is whether the policy itself that I have written is correct or not. So here, like with allowed and disallowed examples that we have uh, provided in the directory structure, right? So getter getter verify. Uh, we can use the getter uh, verify commands to ensure that the policies policy we have written uh, is correct or not. So and if you see at the end here, right, where uh, the getter verify, uh, like if you uh, like run the gator verify it will tell whether uh, whether it's passing or not so let's uh, quickly look into the demo of uh, of these commands so we'll first see the gator uh, test demo uh, and uh, let's see how it works so as i was mentioning right so we have this directory structure we have uh, where where we have uh policies that we have written so samples will have uh, uh like you know allowed uh, uh, example or disallowed examples and the constraint uh the suit.yaml file as i was mentioning will define the test for this uh, this whole policy and template is nothing but your actual uh, uh rego template 
So let's see what uh, what we have in this resources. Uh, so there is a pod.yaml file uh, and I'm going to use or I'm intent to uh, deploy this pod uh, into my cluster. So I want to make sure uh, that this pod has an owner label. And as you can see, it does not have an owner label. So we should expect an error. So let's see what happens. So when I do get our test and provide the directory structure, uh, I mean, uh, so when we do get a test and we provide the the, the policy uh, path and then the resource or the file uh, that we are uh, going to test this against, you, we get an error saying that, hey, all parts must have an owner level. So this is typically uh, without a getter sailor, typically you would have to deploy this policy onto the cluster first and then you will have to you know, actually try and create a pod after which you will get a, a error similar to this. but what this allows us to do is like it essentially uh, helps us to shift left and make sure you know we do uh, everything right even before we deploy the policies now let's take an another example uh, where we have a pod which has a uh, uh, which has the pod label so if you can see here the only difference between the previous uh, yaml file and this yaml file is it has an owner label so it says like the owner is uh, nilek dot agile bank dot uh, dot table so when we run this uh, when we run this resource file against our policies we should not get any error And as, as expected, like we don't we don't have any errors. That means whatever uh, resources or pod that we are going to create into the cluster will uh, this this particular policy will allow this resource. So that way, this way we are very much sure that uh, our policy works as intended. Let's quickly also look at the gator verify. So remember, the gator verify allows you to verify the policy itself. So it's mostly uh, allowing you to uh, write test for your policies and make sure that uh, your pol whatever the new policies that you're uh, creating uh, has been tested correctly. So again, let's start with the uh, directory structure. So it's the same directory structure that we have. And let's uh, quickly see uh, what we have in the suit.yaml file. So again, it's it's the same uh, file that we see uh, in the uh, in the demo. Uh, so, so what basically it does is again, like it allows you to define what you're going to test, what constraint you are going to test this against, and uh, write some assertions whether you are expecting the violation or not. So now, if we run the getter verify against this entire uh, directory it will uh, tell you uh, that whether it passes or not. So again, so this is uh, this is very very much helpful in order to so sort of define what the policy will be and whether whether my policy is going to work or not. Cool. So that's that's all about the Gator uh, uh, CLI, but uh, let's let's look into the uh, uh, so, some of the diff, uh, one of the different features that we implemented recently. So continuing with the same example of the required label policy that we saw earlier, right? Let's explore how we can leverage the external data feature in this scenario. You know, but before we uh, delve into that, uh, let's briefly discuss what external data is. So Gatekeeper offers various ways to mutate and validate Kubernetes resources, but in many cases, this data is either built-in, static, or user-defined. Uh, with external data feature, Gatekeeper can now interface with the uh, different external data sources, such as image registries uh, or you know uh, any any other external data or any data that that's that is not available within the cluster. Uh, and we do so uh, and, and we do so with the provider based model. So this model model establishes a common interface for extending the Gatekeeper with the external data. So leveraging external data brings like several benefits, including addressing common patterns with single provider and facilitating the authoring of the constraint template and data sources. So uh, re returning to our previous example, right? Uh, suppose we suppose a user specifies uh, an owner label on the resource, right? Uh, we we want to uh, validate if that specified owner actually exists in an agile bank. 
right? I mean, we can, uh, if we just say that, you know, hey, uh, here is an owner that I've specified onto the file, but owner can be literally garbage at uh, garbage dot agile demo dot uh, dot demo or whatever that is, right? But that garbage user is not an actual real user. So uh, we want to make sure that, you know, it, it is actually a valid user. And since this data is external to the Kubernetes cluster, uh, an external data provider can assist us in validating this. So there is no way we are we are going to have all the users or all the employees that are there in the company uh, uh, present in the Kubernetes cluster or you know have the data available in the uh, Kubernetes cluster. So if you can see the last uh, line in this example here on the right hand side, right? It says uh, it says like send external data request, right? So uh, in this last line here, we invoke the external data provider and provide it with, uh, with the owner's information. So uh, the line before that, we are grabbing all the owner or the different owners that we may have and pass it uh, to this external data. The external data provider then verifies if the owner actually exists in Agile Bank's Active Directory and then the results, uh, returns the results uh, accordingly. So let's quickly look uh, or see you know how it looks in the real life so let's first see uh, you know uh, what 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 in the constraint templates uh, what we have in the constraint template so it's the same template that i was showing on the slide earlier and if you can see here, like we are grabbing the owners and then we are sending the request to the external data. So this is this is what our template is going to do when uh, when this policy is in effect and, and it is being applied against the end resources. Let's also quickly look at the uh, constraint that we have defined for this. So if you look at this, what we are saying is it, it's it's the same template uh, where, or it's the same uh, typical constraint of the gatekeeper where we are saying that, hey, the enforcement action is denied and I want to uh, test this or validate or have this policy run against uh, uh, the uh, against parts basically. And now we are, uh, what we're trying to do here is we're essentially trying to uh, create a now, what we're trying to do is we're trying to uh, create an image. And if you can uh, see from the command over here, right, the the label that we have defined uh, is not nilek.agilebank.demo. So although we're defining a label, not nilek is not an actual user or, or the employee of the Agile Bank. So ideally, what we this will do is uh, when, when this policy is being executed, it will grab this owner, not nilek.agilebank.demo, and it will send this uh, string or, or this label to the external data provider. Then external data provider will actually validate whether not Nilek presents in the Active Directory or not. And if it does not, then it will uh, send an error accordingly. So let's see that in action. So as uh, as so as you are seeing here, right? We are uh, we got the error right perspective saying that you know a user not Nilek is not found in Agile Banks directory. So so this way we are we are bringing in some uh, a real information or we are validating against some uh, dynamic information for that matter. Now let's uh, try to run the uh, same command with uh, with maybe a proper uh, owner. Uh, owner level basically. So now we have uh, the owner as Nilek dot Agile Bank dot demo, and we know that Nilek exists uh, in uh, Agile Bank or uh, and it's it's an employee of the Agile Bank. So Active Directory will have that information and it will uh, allow the resource to create. So there you go. So uh, so it just give a, a JSON because I'm running that in dry, uh, dry run mode. But what it says is like, uh, it validated that hey, Nilek exists. So we are going to, we are going to allow this resource. Uh, what, uh, I mean, there is, there is an another uh, real life example uh, of the external data provider uh, with Ratify project. Which focuses on uh, which focuses on the container image verification. So if you know uh, about the ratify, it's the it's, it's the ratification framework, which makes sure that you know 
uh, your container image is signed properly and things like that. So another, uh, so, so the real world example could be like whenever uh, you, let's say, try to deploy a pod and you mention, hey, there is this uh, uh, XYZ image, right? But you also want to make sure that that image is uh, signed or not, right? Uh, so the ratify external uh, data provider uh, can come in handy and this is uh, this provider is maintained by the community and it's one of actually several uh, external data providers that are available uh, including there is one for uh, for the cosign so there is a cosign provider which is also maintained by the community and all this information uh, is by the way available uh, in our gatekeeper website so if you go into the gatekeeper website there is a section for the external data which talks about various different uh, external data provider that are available today and uh, uh, there is also a template on a GitHub which can let you create your own uh, data provider by by just creating another repo from, from that GitHub uh, repo template. So uh, so coming back to the Ratify example, right? So so as I was saying, so like when you try to deploy the pod, it will say, hey, this is the image, and it will call it could call the Ratify uh, data provider or external data provider. So Ratify will make sure that uh, this image is signed up signed or not. And then it can send uh, uh, the results back to the uh, back to the gatekeeper accordingly, saying that hey, uh, you know this is uh, allowed versus this is not allowed and things like that. So so this gives a real nice uh, interface to interact with the dynamic system, and uh, which helps us actually write meaningful policies or uh, far better policies uh, uh, than what we could do with the static data. Uh, with this, uh, like there are there are these like different uh, 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 features that we are, uh, that we have seen so far. Uh, I would like to hand over uh, now to my colleague Jaydeep in order to uh, explain some of the other features that uh, that we are seeing or that we have that we have for you now. Jay. Yep. Thanks, Nilak. Uh, sharing my screen. Cool. Good. So next in line uh, is validation of workload resources. Uh, so workload resource is basically a resource that creates another resource, just like deployment or a job, right? And now Gatekeeper can be configured to reject workload resources that might create a resource that violates a constraint or a policy. For example, we could configure Gatekeeper to immediately reject deployments that would create a pod that violates a constraint instead of rejecting the pods. Now, this feature can be enabled via uh, Unable Generator Resource Expansion Flag. To achieve this, Gatekeeper creates a mock resource for pod, runs validations on it, and aggregates the most resources, uh, aggregates the mock resources violations onto the parent resource. To use this uh, functionality, uh, we need to create expansion template that tells uh, Gatekeeper on how to and what to uh, mock and what resources to expand into mock resources. So any resources configured for expansion will be expanded by both validating webhook and audit. Now this feature uh, will only work if expansion template is created uh, for a targeted resource that exists on the cluster. For example, uh, on the right, this expansion template uh, indicates gatekeeper to expand deployment and replica sets onto pods. But there are catches, right? So some of the policies, for example, known state based policies cannot be enforced accurately. What do I mean with this is that policies that rely on transients metadata, such as requesting user or time of creation. Now, this is because metadata uh, of that kind won't be uh, present until the time of creation of the resource. So those kinds of policies cannot be ac enforced accurately. Now, I'm a developer at Agile Bank, right? And why is this feature useful to me? So we have talked about the owner label policy, right? So with that policy, uh, I'm trying to create deployments that will create pods uh, on my cluster uh, that do not have uh, owner label, right? And without expansion template, if I create those deployments, uh, Gatekeeper will accept those deploy deployments uh, without any uh, without giving me any errors 
but uh, admission webhook will reject the pods and I would need to look at the deployment and replica set to see what went wrong. But with this feature enabled, Gatekeeper can mock the pod that will be created by the deployment that I'm creating and see that the pod that is getting created will not have owner label and it rejects the deployment right away. So I don't need to, uh, you know, look at to look into deployment and replica set to debug what went wrong. So now let's look at the demo. Uh, spinning up demo. Cool, right? So in the demo, I'm going to walk through uh, what is there in the gatekeeper namespace. So it's the uh, all the things that are created with the installation of gatekeeper, uh, gatekeeper audit uh, manager and other stuff. Uh, we are making sure the expansion is enabled uh, with the uh, the display, right? Uh, this is the constraint template that I'm using, which is the same as uh, uh, we displayed earlier. Uh, and then there is a and this is the constraint that uh, enforces the constraint template, basically indicating that every port that is created in the load balancer namespace must have an owner label. So now let's look at the now let's apply those uh, and look at the deployment. So this deployment here basically will create a pod which will be missing owner level, right? And uh, so far we have not uh, created any expansion template that uses this feature. So now let's try to create, uh, uh, let's try to create and this, this deployment. And it was accepted. And it will be in violation uh, of a policy, right? So now I will need to check if the pod is up or not. And as we can see, uh, there is no pods running with this deployment. So I'm going to describe the deployment and see what went wrong, right? I see that uh, replica set is scaled up to the desired one, which is one. So I am now looking into replica set to see what went wrong and there I can see the message that admission webhook denied the request because it was missing the uh, required owner label, right? So now I'm trying to delete the deployment. So this is the same expansion template that we saw earlier, which indicates gatekeeper to uh, mock pods created by deployment at replica set. And now I applied the same deployment and it tells me that uh, my deployment is not acceptable because uh, the owner label was missing, right? So now let's, let's move ahead with the next feature. Cool. So next one in the line is mutation. So this feature allows Gatekeeper to modify Kubernetes resources at request time based on customizable mutation policies. Mutation policies are defined using a specific CRD that is called mutator. There are four types of mutator uh, available with Gatekeeper for different purposes, right? So first and foremost is assigned metadata, and we will get into the example of the same in the right-hand side very soon. So assigned metadata is a mutator that modifies the metadata section of the resource. Metadata section is a very sensitive piece of data, and certain mutation could result in unintended uh, consequences, such as updating name or namespace, right? So this, meta, uh, this mutator uh, has been limited to only uh, modify labels and annotation. And in in that also, right, it, the assign mutator, uh, assign metadata mutator do not have capabilities of uh, modifying existing label or annotation. It only has uh, capabilities of adding those things. The next one is assign mutator. It is useful to make any changes outside of the metadata section, such as setting images, full policy for all containers to be always. 
Next one is modify set mutator and that can be uh, used to add or remove entries from the list such as container a uh, list of container arguments right and then the last one is assign image which is specifically designed for changing components of image strings all of these uh, mutators can be divided into essentially three distinct sections uh, that to say that uh, all of these uh, mutators have three uh, different sections that can be uh, but that are in the uh, that are the part of the specification, right? The first one is extent of changes, which basically defines that what needs to be modified, essentially the match section of the spec. Then the intent of the changes, defining where the changes should happen. That is basically the location part of the spec and then conditions under which the mutation should be applied, right? So that's a parameter part of the uh, spec. Uh, and that basically defines the whole uh, assigned uh, a whole mutator spec. So on the right hand side, we can see that uh, uh, this assigned metadata mutator will be applied to uh, a pod that is that that have uh, nginx label on it, uh, and it will modify uh, it will add the label which is owner and assign the value admin. Right. So now let's. Uh, now let's look at the next slide. So this is the example uh, of what happens uh, with the previous mutation a mutator in place, right? Uh, so this is on the left hand side, we can see the pod is there uh, that's before mutation because there is no owner label there. And then once we apply this pod and the mutation is in place, uh, gatekeeper will add this owner label. Uh, Let's let's look at the demo for the same. Let me share my screen again. Right. So before we we do this demo, right? Let's let's define the use case. That why is this feature useful to me, working at a gel bank, right? So I'm trying to deploy resources on the cluster. We have the same policy as owner lab. Uh, there has to be an owner label in in the resources we create. Uh, I'm using shared YAML files, and I'm really uh, annoyed that I am have to kind of a, modify those YAML files every time I'm trying to create resources. Uh, to add this owner label. So now I can use the mutation to basically uh, create my own policies, uh, mutation policies that, that adds the resource, uh, adds the required owner label for the resources that I create, right? Uh, now let's look into the demo, right? Cool, so this is the deployment I'm gonna create, which miss, uh, which doesn't have uh, owner label or which will create the board that, that is missing from owner label. So uh, we get rejected. This is the same assigned metadata uh, that we saw earlier. I'm gonna apply it. And I'm going to try creating the same uh, deployment once more to see. If my board gets accepted, right? And there we can see that the uh, owner label was added by the uh, mutation feature. Cool, let's move ahead. So the next one is uh, PubSub model, right? So this is the very recent change that we did where it allows consuming all of the violations uh, of audit using PubSub model, right? So right now gatekeeper uh, uses constraint to bu bubble up these audit violations where you could find uh, the violations on the status of a constraint uh, and, and get the information about uh, which resource is in violation of your policies. But due to ETCD limits on how large an object can grow, 
Gatekeeper is capped at reporting maximum of 500 violations per constraint or unconstrained statuses. With this feature, Gatekeeper is now uh, able to publish all the audit violations over a channel uh, as and when violations are caught. Since messages are not stored on cube object, there is no cap right now and uh, Gatekeeper is now able to bubble up all the violation using this PubSub model, right? And consumer can subscribe to those uh, violations by subscribing to the channel where Gatekeeper is publishing. it. So on the right hand side, uh, uh, there is an example of a config map that is essentially defines that essentially defines how and information on how to uh, initiate the connection and using what provider, right? So the con uh, config map on the right essentially says that uh, PubSub uh, audit should use Dapper provider, and then in the config section, it defines all the necessary information to. Uh, open and maintain the same connection to publish the messages. Uh, on to the next slide. So right now, here is the Dapper example, right? Because right now uh, we have created a driver that works with the Dapper and can be used, utilized to uh, use Dapper's PubSub functionality to publish the messages. So, but the interface is extensible, so but it, the solution, ultimate solution, really supports any PubSub tools such as RabbitMQ, Kafka, but you need appropriate driver to use these tools. Let's look at the high level architecture, which remains the same for all the tools, uh, uh, and see how this feature works, right? So I have a Dapper runtime running in Kubernetes system. I have a gatekeeper audit pod with uh, the right configuration, that is, uh, Dapper sidecar injected with the audit pod. Uh, Whenever audit gets the violation, it will publish the violation. Dapper sidecar uh, will publish that violation on behalf of audit to a channel. Uh, subscriber app in describes the intent of subscribing to that particular channel, and then Dapper injects the sidecar into subscriber app as well. And whenever there is a message on that channel, a sidecar container will uh, let the application know and, and forward that message that message to that application so that subscriber receives all the violations that are published by audit pod. Cool. So now what is the format of this uh, violations, right? What information will subscriber get? So this is the same as uh, audit log violations where a subscriber is getting this information for every uh, violation that occur in the audit run. Audit ID, uh, details, violation message, and all the information that can help locate the resource that is in violation. So why is this feature useful to me as a developer or a maintainer working at a jail bank, right? So we have this honor label policy in place. And we generally get a high amount of violation per constraint in our cluster. But the maximum violations I can get for a constraint is 500 with the current solution. But I want to get more than 500 so that I can potentially fix or raise further concerns about these violations and, and the resource that are in violations, right? And so I, I enable the pop sub feature with Gatekeeper and, and get all the violations on a channel instead of a resource and then uh, I can get notified uh, by the subscriber as and when violations are there. Let's now let's look at the demo on how this works, right? So let me share that again. Cool. So I'm going to walk through a uh, whole setup of this PubSub and what is there in each and every uh, related namespaces, right? So for our purposes, when we are using Dapper, we kind of have to, uh, we kind of have four uh, namespaces that are of our interest. First and foremost is Dapper system. And in Dapper system, the Dapper runtime is running. Like every, uh, they have five ports for Dappers, different functionality. Uh, then in the default namespace, I have Redis running, which is essentially a broker that 
that will or act as a queue uh, for messages. Then uh, we have a subscriber subscribing to the to a channel where audit will be publishing messages. And we can see in the subscriber there are two containers running. One is the application container. Another one is the uh, another one is the one with uh, a Dapper sidecar. And then in the gatekeeper, nothing changes except now gate gatekeepers audit pod is running with two containers. One is injected by sidecar and a service that is created by Dapper to uh, publish the messages. Cool. So on the left, on the right hand side, I'm subscribing or I'm tailing to the pods of subscriber application. Uh, and as we can see right now, there is uh, no pods, but uh, if violations occur and are published, uh, we will see uh, those violations received by the subscriber uh, application, right? So on the left hand side, I'm trying to create the resources. I'm trying to create the same policy and constraint that we have been talking about, uh, which is owner label one. Uh, and then we'll see uh, audit running and, and we getting the violations uh, in the subscriber in a moment. So yeah, uh, audit ran in the background. And then on the right hand side, we can see that we got the messages uh, or violations for the port that were in the violation. Cool. And that was it for, uh, for this feature. Uh, for the next one, I'm gonna hand it over to Milet. So uh, let's discuss the multi-engine support uh, in Kubernetes 1.26, uh, which introduces an alpha feature called validating admission policy. So this feature enables declarative in-process validation of policies against the admission request. The motivation for this is to help us understand when to use what and you know what's the difference between the two, like what's the difference between when, when we want to use the validating admission policies and when to, when we want to use the gatekeeper so firstly the validating admission policy uh, is an uh, entry native policy uh, eliminating the need for an additional hop uh, required by the typical admission webhooks this has the benefit of reducing the request latency and enhancing the reliability and the availability with the with the absence of the extra hop you can now implement uh, a fail close approach uh, this addresses a significant issue with admission webhooks where the requirement of an extra hop can impact the request, uh, you know, and, and results in uh, many webhook, uh, webhooks failing open. Uh, so ensuring the policy enforcement while maintaining the cluster avail availability uh, is crucial and the validating admission policy allows you to fail close with, uh, without concern about availability. Uh, the burden of operation is also reduced since there is no need to maintain uh, additional webhook. And uh, uh, as we know, the embedded language that is used by this uh, valid validating admission policy is self. So, uh, so that's cool, right? Uh, that's what validation admission policy does. Uh, now let's take a look at the gatekeeper. And you might be wondering in which scenarios you would actually need to use gatekeeper. Well. Uh, a gatekeeper provides the audit functionality that validating uh, admission policy does not. So just now we saw Jay's demo where uh, we even added this pops up feature, which allows us to swiftly consume all the violations, right? So there, there, uh, th this functionality currently is missing from the validation admission policy. Uh, in theory, you could get uh, get to your API server and examine the logs, but with gatekeeper audit, you can uh, you can have all the violations conveniently accessible uh, and uh, as i was saying like pops up makes it uh, even more convenient uh, if you have integrations with audit you can generate other reports and compliance reports uh, for the cluster operator uh, the, another aspect uh, to consider here is uh, referential policies so what do i mean uh, by referential policies 
Uh, well, uh, let's say you uh, you have a policy that needs to ensure that the, ensure the uniqueness of the ingress host uh, for example. Uh, achieving the uniqueness requires examining the incoming request and then comparing them against the uh, everything already present in the cluster. This type of policy we typically call them as a referential policies and goes beyond what you know what admission uh, validating admission policy can accomplish today. Uh, furthermore, when it comes to the external data, as we saw earlier, uh, there is a high probability uh, that you have a data source located outside the cluster while valid. Uh, yeah, so while validating admission policy focuses primarily on the uh, uh, on the data within the cluster, the inclusion of the external uh, data provides the additional capability for the scenarios uh, which requires information from the external data sources. Uh, this expanded functionality uh, offers greater flexibility uh, as per your specific needs. Uh, additionally, Gatekeeper not only assist in uh, validating policies, but also facilitate mutations. So, right, we, we just now saw the demo of how the mutation works. And so it go, uh, goes with the Gator CLI. So Gator CLI allows us uh, like the shift validation as we were seeing. So uh, you, you can do all the, uh, all the, uh, functionality that policy uh, the, the gatekeeper can do even before you know we get actually uh, implemented into the uh, uh, before uh, implementing those policies into the cl uh, cluster. Uh, moreover, uh, moreover, the OPA offers remarkable capabilities, allowing you to define highly intricate rules that surpasses the limitation of the validation admission policies. So Rego, with Rego, you can define, uh, you know, different types of expressions and conditions that may not be possible with uh, validating admission policies today. Uh, furthermore, the numerous connect, uh, I mean, community policy libraries are readily available, uh, which offers a wide range of pre-existing policies that can be effortlessly deployed uh, in your cluster. And we have the whole, uh, gatekeeper libraries uh, uh, that you can you know uh, browse and uh, just use it so this eliminates the need to create a policies from scratch uh, so with gatekeeper multi engine support you can uh, you can leverage opa or other engines uh, and uh, uh, which you know allows you to sort of write the policies in rego or any other preferred language so that's cool i mean they both have uh, they both serve different purpose uh, but you might still wonder, uh, you know, how you can achieve the best of both worlds, or you know, is is there a is there a way uh, to accomplish that? Uh, next slide, please. So yes, uh, so there is a there is a way to sort of you know uh, see if we can uh, get a best of both worlds, and that's where the concept of multi engine uh, comes into play. So we are currently working on this concept to enhance the gatekeeper. So as of now, gatekeeper relies on the constraint framework that we have uh, that we have in the OPA. However, the goal is to create an abstraction layer that simplifies the user experience. So this abstraction layer allows user to write policies in uh, in the preferred language, while the while the operators deploying these policies follow the same deployment process. Uh, in 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 the essence, the multi engine enables uh, you know. Uh, multi-language, multi-target policy enforcement. So you can use the languages like Rego or Cell uh, targeting uh, different platforms such as like, you know, uh, Kubernetes admission or Terraform, uh, or, you know, if you can come up with any other uh, such platforms. This approach allows for portable policies, uh, meaning the same policies can be used across different CI CD pipelines or the enforcement mechanisms. Furthermore, the gatekeeper already supports multiple uh, multiple engines, so enabling you to leverage the strengths of different engines that are available in the community. So we believe that this approach can be beneficial for the gatekeeper and OPA. Uh, I mean, I mean, the gatekeeper and OPA are significantly more mature uh, uh, compared to uh, the entry validating admission policy, you know, which is still in the alpha stage. Uh, so the goal uh, here is to bridge the gap uh, and you know provide a solution that can combine the power of both gatekeeper and uh, gatekeeper and opa and you know uh, the validating admission policy so by utilizing the gatekeeper and the gator cli you can not only obtain the audit uh, capabilities but you know also perform the shift left validations and uh, for the for the new validating admission policies 
with with no additional cost so it's it's literally like you know comes free with all the existing feature that we have in gatekeeper so this integration also allows us for comprehensive policy enforcement and uh, validation throughout the development uh, development process so this is uh, you know this is the uh, vision that we are going with and you know we we would want to sort of make sure that both this uh, world can come together and coexist and you know provide like a good uh, uh, end user experience whether you are developing the policies or whether you are deploying the policies in your uh, cluster for your compliance comp compliance or the other uh, other purpose so so this this sort of uh, uh, sort of gives will give you an idea what we are doing in terms of uh, uh, a cell or like the multi engine support and things like that uh, before we wrap up like we do have like uh, some like a uh, common updates that we want to talk about so i'll let jay again talk about those uh, updates jay thanks uh, yeah so we have some other updates to share some features uh, so namespaces first and foremost is namespace exemption with suffix so now namespaces can be exempted uh, based on the suffix. That is a flag. Uh, the flag uh, is exempt namespace suffix. And this is useful uh, when namespace is in the form of tenant dash something. And in cases where you would like to exempt certain namespaces for all tenants. The next one is uh, open census and strict, drive, uh, strict driver exporters. Uh, two new uh, metrics exporters are now added to a gatekeeper alongside Prometheus. Uh, and there is also extensible exporter interface uh, in case uh, anyone wants to add any other uh, exporter or it makes it easier uh, to maintain a fork that adds more uh, exporter as well. So uh, then the third one is uh, emitting events in involved object uh, namespace. So now with uh, two new flags, uh, each for ad admission and audit, uh, which is uh, emit admission events and emit audit events. Uh, audits, uh, events is essentially can be uh, audited, no, sorry, emitted into, uh, audit, audit violations can be uh, emitted as a Kubernetes event. And this flag is in alpha stage, set to false by default. Uh, and then there are other flags also, uh, which basically mentions that uh, if uh, emitted event should be uh, in the namespace of the object uh, that is responsible for uh, this violation or in the gatekeeper's uh, namespace. Uh, and for the cluster scope resources, it's always in the gatekeeper's namespace. And then the last one is uh, ability to validate sub resources. Now resources such as pods, log, uh, pod eviction, replica set scales, node proxy are also, uh, can, can also be validated with Gatekeeper. And that it, that's it. Yeah, cool. For, uh, yeah, thanks. Sir. Yeah, let us know like if you have any questions, uh, you know, uh, we can uh, help and try and answer those questions and uh, you know uh, i would like to take this opportunity to also thank all the uh, gatekeeper maintainer and the contributor to sort of help implement all these features uh, feel free to drop in uh, you know uh, onto the slack channel so we have a slack channel called gatekeeper on open policy agents uh, slack uh, workspace uh, so feel free to drop in there say hi uh, we have our community meetings every other I mean, we, we do it every every week on Wednesdays. Uh, so, you know, come there, say hi to us, uh, or feel free to open an issue uh, 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 on the GitHub. Awesome. Thank you, Thank you all very much. Um, everyone still with us, if you have any questions, go ahead and pop them into the chat now for um, Jadeep and Malik, and uh, we'll see what we get. And if we have done, then we'll just wrap up a little bit early. Okay, here we go. You mentioned open census. Is open telemetry also covered? Um, 
I am not sure about that. Uh, I don't think so, but I kind of need to check. I'm sorry. Oh. They said, I thought Open Census and Open Tracing merged to become Open Telemetry. Uh, Do you know if that's correct? Yeah, I think we can we can look into it and see yeah. what exactly been implemented. Perfect. Thanks, Bridget. Anyone else have questions? One more minute, just in case someone's typing. <laughs> okay. Up. Oh, thank you. They said the demos were excellent. All right. Well, I think that um, have y'all put your handles into the chat so that if anyone wants to follow up with you, they can find you. I know it was in the end of your uh, slides, so we'll get. I'll make sure if one of you can send me that final deck right after we hop off. I'll make sure it's attached when we uh, load the recording. Um, but otherwise, thank you so much, Jadip and Nalik, for a great presentation, and. Um, Everyone join us next time for another live webinar with CNCF and have a great weekend and rest of your week. Cool. Thank you. Thank you both. See you folks.